The body of Christ is awesome. That's what we're talking about here. I'm, I'm talking about this, and I've, I've been talking about this lately, and last, last week, and this week, and just talking about what, what God is doing. And, uh, you know, how many know people are a challenge? Anybody get that? Anybody, anybody with me? Yeah, people are a challenge, amen. amen. But I want you to know something. He designed it that way. God designed it that way. We're, 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 we are to challenge each other. What? So that we can change. Hello. We need to change. The body of Christ needs to challenge one, one another. We need to challenge each other. We need to, to, to say, hey, come on, man. You can do this. We need to encourage each other to get up and get going and get, get moving. Amen? Do your call. Amen? Now, I'm not saying you bug somebody to death or anything like that, but I am saying that you, you see gifts in people. I used to be so frustrated. I have a gift as a pastor that I see gifts in people. I do. I just see them. And I, there are some people that just aren't using their gifts. There are some people that are called for such a time as this, and they are sitting on it, man. They're sitting on it like they're sitting on a park bench, just sitting on there wasting time instead of using what they are called, their gift, that, that God has called them to be in this body and be part of something. Hey, man, how many of you know we all need to be something? a part of something bigger than us. If you are just sitting there in your own little uh, bird cage, huh? if you're just sitting there in your own little bird cage, uh, just thinking that you have it on a stick, you're in trouble. You are. That's that, that, you're dying. Amen? I don't want to be dying. I want to be living. Don't you? I want to live to the fullest. You know, I'm getting a little bolder now that I'm not 50 anymore. You thought I was, didn't you, Joe? Yeah, Joe thought I was 50. That's pretty good, Joe. Um, I want you to turn with me as I'm, uh, as I'm praying here. I'm going to pray first, and then I want you to turn with me to Proverbs 27 and verse 17. And uh, Father God, I just want to thank you today for this church. I want to thank you for this body. Father God, I want to thank you for a church that challenges each other, that people challenge each other, and people say, hey, come on, you can do it. We encourage one another. We love one another. And Father God, I thank you today that we don't take from one another, but that we love one another. We don't have expectations that somebody gives us something, but we have an expectation on ourselves and on you that we can give somebody else something. Father, we just believe today that your anointing is here and in every one of us. And there is a powerful time together today that all of us, Father God, can do those calls, those gifts, and use every one of them to help change the body of Christ and even to help change the world in this great awakening time. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And the crowd goes wild. Proverbs chapter 27. And this is a, a scripture that we, we named our men's group after. Right, Joe? Right. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Oh my goodness. Amen? You know, it, you know, I don't know if you know about this, but iron's not, not soft. Iron, iron's, iron's hard. Amen? And, and I wonder why he would use that for us. Because that's how we are. We got rough edges. We got sharp edges. Sometimes we're dull. We need, to, we, we need to sharpen each other. We, we, we need to really, really believe God and just say, hey, listen, man, 
You are anointed for such a time as this. You've got a gift in this area and you can do it. You can do it. Amen. Faithful is he who calls you for he also will do it through you. Amen. That's what the word says. He's going to do it through you. It's his power. Amen. You just got to believe it. You got to believe you can do something more than, than what you think you can do. Amen. You know, in general, and if you look at this, in general, there, there are, are, are two types of people. And, and there, there's, uh, I'm just talking generally. This is not all inclusive. This is not a, a, a hotel in Cozumel where Julie's right now suffering for Jesus. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I'm not hoping she's having a great time. But uh, two type of people. There's independent people. And then there's codependent people. Hello. Uh, and, and most of us fit in one of those categories just in general. Most of us do. Um, independent people seem to have no need for others. And they don't really give a rip if you like them or not. Right? Come on now. And then there's codependent people that have a very unhealthy need for others. And they'll suck the life out of you. The dependent people won't give you any life and the codependent people will suck the life out of you. So both of them are messed up. Amen. There's not, there's not one way that's better. It's not better to be independent. Don't think it is. Don't, don't envy, if you're codependent, don't envy those people that are dependent or, or, or independent. Don't, don't envy them because you, they're just as messed up as you are. It's just a different way. Are you here? This is real stuff. <laughs> both types are messed up big time. The body of Christ helps us develop into interdependent people. Amen? Interdependence is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not, see, what, what happens is people come to church and they're codependent and they want you to meet their needs. They really want the pastor to meet their, their needs. They sometimes think pastors are paid friends. They do. I'm sure. Well, I've had people tell me that. Well, I give in the offering. Can't you spend some more time with me? You think that well, that's what giving in the offering does? I mean, that isn't even what this is about. And then the church people, church people, the same way, man. They just, they'll suck the life right out of you. They'll expect you to do something for them. Let me tell you what, there's a sickness in the church in America that says you go to church to get fed. It's a sickness. It's messed up. You don't go to church to get fed. You go to church to feed. You go to church to feed somebody else. You go there to get something and you, you have the whole wrong motive. You're codependent. You're sick and you need help. And if you go there thinking, well, I don't need any of these people, you're just as messed up. Amen. Oh, dear. We, we, we really need to think about who we are. What, what are we? Are we into this stuff? I mean, what, what are we talking about? See, we, we all have to... Oh, let's see. Interdependent people let others have a healthy relationship with them by choosing to open up and get involved. See, we all have to realize we're challenged by others. And without a challenge, there's no growth. And I'm a weird guy. I'm not normal, in case you haven't noticed. But uh, I don't believe in spiritual growth. I don't. And I, I believe your spirit's perfect. 
Your spirit doesn't need to grow. But let me tell you what I do believe in, soul growth. Amen. Your soul needs to grow. Mm -hmm. My soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions needs help. Yep. And so does yours. Yep. And that's what the body of Christ does. It builds our soul. Amen? Builds our body. I'm not, let me tell you what, your, your body will be healthy if your soul's healthy. Watch out now. He's gone to meddling. Think about it. It's real. That's real stuff. We're not just making this up. We're not just coming out of a, you know, some kind of a oblivious state of, you know, we didn't have anything cool to say, so we're saying this. This is, this is real stuff, and we need each other. How many of you know that? We need the body of Christ, not in a sick way. Need is truly codependency. But we need each other as the body of Christ because we, we're set here in this motion. It's not stagnant, it's motion. And it's motion so that we can change the world. So that we can uh, bring people to Jesus so that we can make disciples. Amen? Uh, a challenge is healthy. But a uh, Threat brings offense. Yeah? Are you with me? You threaten me? What do I do? I rise against you. <laughs> Amen? I fight. I'm, you know, there's fight or flight people. I'm a fight people. You know, I don't, I don't, you, you, come, uh, you come at me, I'll fight. I don't run away. I don't have a fear of man. I shouldn't say that all inclusive either because that guy, that big guy that came against me in uh, Costco that day uh, was way bigger than me and he could have pounded me into the ground like a fence post driver, you know? But let me tell you what, I, I still, I'm not, I don't have that fear. I'm not afraid of men. But, but, but that, that isn't what matters. See, even the word can threaten you. I think a lot of people are threatened by the word. But we got to realize it's what changes us. The word builds us. And people around us build us and sharpen us. Amen? Amen. We need to be sharpened. You guys sharpen me. I love to come to church. I'm a church guy, man. I like church. I don't want to be away from church. When we're out of town or something, I miss church. We love it because it, we're building all the time. You guys build us, and, and, and we love it. We learn from each other. If you don't change today, you're going to be the same tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. It may not just be the day you get saved, but it's the day you kick into your salvation. Are you with me? We need to surrender to the Word. The Word of God. And in, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. The Word was with God. And, and, and Jesus is the Word. Are you with me? Are you hearing this? The Word of God is true. It's got to be the truth for us. For us to change, we have to believe differently. You got to change your belief system. So do I. You don't have it on a stick. I don't have it on a stick. I don't claim to do that. The day you think you have it on a stick, the day you think you know, you're done. You can't grow, you're dead. I had a man tell me, a very intelligent guy, maybe not so, but he had, you know, he had 32 degrees and he was still frozen. Uh or 33 degrees, and he was still frozen. I mean, he had all kinds of degrees. But he was dumber than a box of rocks. He told me one day he couldn't learn anything else in the Bible he already knew. He had several doctrines. That's what he told me. That's what I told him. That's sad. That's a sad day, man. I tell you what, I don't care who you are and how many times you've read the Bible. I don't care what you've done. You've got to learn something every day. 
You got to change every day. You need to change. I need to change how I think. The only problem we have is between our ears. Hello? It really is. It's just between our ears. It's our stinking thinking that takes us out every time. It's our stinking thinking that takes us to the ground every time. Amen or oh me? Proverbs 16, 25. It says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. You think it's right? You think you're right? You think you, you, think you know? You're in trouble. It'll kill you. If it doesn't kill you dead in the body, it'll kill your relationships. None of you have ever had any relationship problems, right? You know the reason you have relationship problems is because you think you're right. On to meddling now. I want to hear about that. You think you know. You think you know the way for them. You think you know the way for your husband or your wife. You don't know. You do know the way for your children, though. Enforce it. Do it right. Swat their little butts when it's time. I am an advocate of spanking. Brandon's looking at me. <laughs> Don't look at me in that tone of voice, son. <laughs> Come on. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is death. When you think you're right, you're in big trouble. When you think you know, you're in big trouble. You can't have confidence in yourself. You need confidence in Jesus. See, you're, you know, we, we, they went for years trying to teach us all self-confidence. That's the worst thing you could ever learn. That's the dumbest thing ever. I'm telling you what, I don't have confidence in me. I have confidence in him. I have confidence that Christ in me, the hope of glory, is where my wisdom lies. And I don't have the answer. I have to go to him. That's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus did every time. Jesus didn't, didn't just go around, well, I think this is the way it is. He said, oh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He went, to, he went to his dad for everything. He's our prototype. He's the one we have to be like. He was teaching us that. Jesus didn't go around thinking he was right. When he was on the earth. Amen. Even though he was. He was. I wasn't saying he's not right. But he didn't go around using that. Even if you're right. Uh, you, ever, you ever been right when you're fighting with your spouse? <laughs> Sam said no. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, really, you really were right. And then... Had the fight and you didn't win anyway? Really? You know, you think it works? It doesn't work. It's not what it's about. You know what I'm learning? I like to be wrong. It got quiet in here. That's weird. No, it's not weird. It means I'm learning something. I'm learning. I want to learn. You know what? I don't understand Mona. I don't. I would be a liar to think I that, that that I did. I understand a couple of things about her, but I guarantee you what? When I learn something about her that changes me, our relationship gets better. We have this thing that we use in marriage. And it's a marriage tool. It's called a strife break. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We've, had, we've, we've used it for years. It came uh, actually from uh, Mike and Marilyn. Phillips taught us that back in the day. I think we learned it when it was Nova Shalom. It wasn't even marriage ministries yet. But it's called a strife break. Right, Dory? 
Now, strife break is a powerful thing, which um, is when you are in, uh, if you're like Mona and I, we've never had a fight. We only have intense fellowship. And so when we're in intense fellowship, you stop and you pray in the spirit for three minutes. No, not, not longer, not shorter, three minutes. And I want you to know we've been practicing this Gosh, for, yeah, whatever it is, a long time. And every single time God tells me where I need to change. He never has told me once, well, Mona's messed up in this area. (laughs) But he tells me where I need to change. Are you with me? Come on, we need to come to that. We need to come to realize that, you know, I need to go to God so I can change my heart, so I can change my stinking thinking, so I don't have to be this right person all the time. I don't have to be right. And let me tell you what, you don't impress anybody if, you, if you're going around telling them how right you are or how much you know or how much you think you know. I'm meddling now, ain't I? Is this meddling or what? Thank you, Lord, that we're called to meddle. Our thinking could just be the source of our pain. Our thinking makes us think that our thinking is not the problem. (laughs) You want me to say that again? Our thinking makes us think that our thinking's not the problem. Oh, it, it, it's not fun. Let me tell you what, that's not fun to just go to Jesus and say, you know, my thinking stinks. <laughs> help! I pray that four-letter word, help, a lot. Amen? So our thinking makes us think that our thinking isn't the problem. What do you think? Come on. It is. Look at, uh, look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. How does it get 10.06? Time lies when you're having fun. 2 Timothy. Found 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16, it says, All Scripture, watch out now, we're going to the answer, aren't we? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's huge, isn't it? And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh my goodness. See, the word builds us up, but it also reproves us and corrects us. Amen? I I believe this with all my heart. This is the rod of correction. Amen? And I've been corrected by it many times, and I've had great men of God that have helped correct me with it. Great women of God. Amen? You ever been corrected by the Word? Well, I needed that. It's called a course correction. And it's not mean-spirited. It's not any of those things, but it's real. And sometimes it's a little painful to take it. I didn't really want to change. Why? Because I thought I was right. Amen, amen. This has got to shut up. You be quiet in Jesus' name. Doesn't want to be quiet. 
stifle yourself. If a person is teachable, it will be a joy to bring a word of correction. You know what chastise means? And it's actually Eloise's fault that I'm on this subject today. Thank you, Eloise. <laughs> Amen. If a person is teachable, it will be a joy to bring a word of correction. Chastise means child training. What? What? You just need a little child training once in a while, don't you? I sure do. Let's go to Proverbs 9. Proverbs 9. We got a lot of scriptures, but let me tell you what, that's where the, the answers lie. And don't just take it here and like we've covered this. Take these scriptures that I give you and go home and study them yourself. Amen. You need to study to show yourself approved. Did we read the verse or what? Proverbs 9 and verse 9, it says, Give instruction to a wise man and he'll still be wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. Come on, man, I want to learn. And you know what? I've even come to the place I can learn from my children. I can learn from my kids. I can learn from you. I can learn from anybody. Amen? That's the body of Christ, sharpening the body of Christ. Um, let's look at Proverbs 12 and verse 15. It says... The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he who heeds counsel is wise. Hello? Don't you need some wise counsel? I do. I always need wise counsel. All the time. Golly. A fool despises correction and instruction. See, it's our job to preach and counsel the truth. Not to have a show. We're not here to entertain you. We're here to tell you the truth. The body of Christ is here to tell you the truth. And I believe you can have fun doing it. I love to have fun. I don't think it all has to be all serious. I believe Jesus short-cheated the disciples' beds. I believe he wanted to have fun. I believe he had fun with the guys. I do. I believe in that. I really do. I believe Jesus had a good time. It's our job to preach and counsel the truth, but everybody has a choice to believe and receive the truth or reject it. See, you can't make them do anything. We were talking this the other night That's uh, in our Thursday night study and you, you, you want to, man. I want to. I got the spirit of choke. I want to just grab him by the neck and say, hey, get this. But it doesn't work. You can't make him get it. You, you can offer it. You can say, here it is. Here you go. You can, you can even go to him and say, listen, I, I believe God told me this for you. But you can't make him receive it. People won't receive it unless they want to. We got to have our want to turned on. Amen. I want my I want my want to turned on to change. I need to change today. There's areas of my life where I know I still have stinking thinking. I'll just admit it. And I tell God that every day. I said, "Oh God, change the way I think about this situation. Change the way I think in general. Change me, Lord. I don't I'm a mess." Can you admit it? Can you admit that you go to the flesh? You know, your spirit's perfect. I told you that already. But your soul can be a mess. Amen? My emotions get all messed up. I don't get all emotional like Mona. She cries and all that stuff. I don't do that. I don't get all emotional that way. But my emotions get messed up. My emotions are, 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 are fickle. You know what I'm talking about? They do. They lie to you. They'll lie to you. They'll tell you all kinds of stuff. And you know what? We got to come to that place where you say, shut up. I'm going to believe Jesus this day. 
We are all responsible to God. Now get this, this is huge. This is a word from God. We're all responsible to God for ourselves. Come on. You, you, you can't go to the priest or the pastor or anybody to get her done for you. You're responsible to God. Amen. But everybody has a choice. Everybody. He has given us a free will and the ability to choose for ourselves. Choose this day whom you will serve. This is the body of Christ. Hey, do you know what? Let people sharpen you. Let them. You know those people, I, I know, and I've told this story many times. I won't go into the whole story. But, but um, you know, when you think you don't want to hear somebody, you better listen. Yeah, there was a pastor. I, I went into this, this big meeting and I didn't like it. Mona's taking notes and burning up pages and, you know, throwing pins away. And, you know, she's just, ah, ah, ah. She's taking all these notes. This guy's boring me to tears. I didn't like him. Well, not I didn't like him. I just didn't like his delivery, you know. We're all like that. Then I came back, I, I left and I went out and looked at the book table, looked under the, looked at the books and, big conference, you know. I didn't want to hear this guy, and so my back was hurting, and I walked around the building, tried to stretch out a little bit. My back was hurting pretty bad. and I walked back in, because I knew Mona would be worried about me after I was gone for 30 minutes. And I uh, walked in, and my, the pain left my back. Whoa, what happened, Lord? And he said, the anointing of that guy you don't like healed you. <laughs> come on we need to listen to the word amen I was there for a reason I wasn't there to walk around the church amen I want you guys to know something today the church is here for all of us we need to help each other get sharp we need to tell each other the truth you know when somebody's sitting there filling you full of you know what malarkey is, right? But uh, when, they, when they're filling you full of stuff, you can just say to them, you know what? That's not what the Word says. The Word says this. Amen? It's not love to let somebody lie to themselves. Hello? <laughs> we won't point out whose phone that was. <laughs> he's, look at, he's pointing at Josh. It wasn't Josh. <laughs> but guys, we, we, we just come to this place where we can be truthful with each other, and love one another truly. Truly to love somebody is to tell them the truth. of Jesus. Amen. We just need to be able to do that with each other. Open yourself up to the body of Christ. Don't be one of those independent people. Not, it's not what it's all about. It is not. It'll get you. What it'll do is it'll get you lonely. Don't be one of those codependent people that thinks everybody's got to fill all of your need. That's a crock too, amen? Amen? You guys okay? You all saved? How many of you are saved? I'm looking around here. Art, are you saved? Come on down here. We're going to get Art saved. 30 years. We're going to get him saved today. Let's say this prayer of salvation together. If there's somebody in here that doesn't know, that you know, that you know, that you know, that Jesus is your Lord. If you're listening on the internet, we want you to know how much God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Lord, we thank you today that we have chosen to believe. Say it with me. Say, I believe Jesus is Lord. I make him this day the Lord of my life by my own free will, by my own choice. I thank you for salvation. 
I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm full of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you know there's no one way to get saved? One way is Jesus. But how you do it is just to believe it in your heart and to confess it with your mouth.